Joining me now to discuss this case is Amy Swear from the Heritage Foundation. Thanks for being here tonight, Amy. Thank you for having me. Right, so lay out this case for us, especially with regard to the central question facing the Supreme Court, which is whether the Constitution guarantees the right to carry our guns outside our homes. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. At the end of the day, this case is about whether the Second Amendment means what it says. It says you have a right to keep and bear arms, and this is about whether or not it really means, no, you have a right to bear arms, including in public for purposes of self-defense, something that states like New York in this case and other states like California have essentially said, no, you don't, as an ordinary law-abiding American, have that right. And so what are some of the arguments being made on, on both sides of this issue? Sure. So, you know, again, it's, it's sort of hard to even fathom that, that uh, the, the, the argument that New York raises is essentially, well, no, when it says to bear arms, it, it means something other than in public. You know, you can bear arms in your home, but as a general rule, if you want to bear arms in public, you need to show, at least in the case of New York, good cause, which means something above and beyond, well, I'm, I'm just worried about defending my, my life, my liberty, my property in public. Um, and so essentially, it's uh, New York raising a public interest argument that's saying, you know, basically, you ordinary law abiding Americans can't be trusted with guns in public. Uh, and so we need to ensure that really only people who really super duper need guns in public, you know, as defined by uh, whoever is, is going through those applications today, well, those are the only people who, who can have guns in public. Whereas I, I think the counter argument is that's not what the text says. The, the text says that just as you have a right to possess arms, you have a right to bear arms and that whatever limits may be imposed, it certainly isn't a limit on, well, no, actually, you can't bear arms. So, so far in this point, we've seen the lower courts, they've upheld New York's law. Uh, but wh which way do you think, if you have any idea right now, you think maybe some of these justices might be ruling on this? Well, I, I think at the end of the day, normally when a court takes on this sort of case, it's because they, they really have questions about the constitutional validity of that law. You know, I, I think when you look at New York in particular, um, we're not talking about, um, you know, oh, well, you, you know, you, you really have a change. It, it is actually the case that if you are just a general American, a normal, ordinary American, you are not going to get that concealed carry permit. Uh, and in fact, um, you, you're seeing um, a, a lot of schemes where you look at who does get these permits. And, and both now and historically, it tends to be people who are well connected, uh, who know the right people, who are donating to the right campaigns. Um, and so, you know, I, I think whenever you're dealing with a right that has been taken away from the general public and has been given to sort of the select few, that it's, it's not a right of the people, it's a right of the special people, um, you know, I, I think there's a good chance that the court is taking this case precisely because you have at least five justices is who are looking at it generally going, well, look, the text says you have a right to bear arms. New York says you don't. And we need to do something about this disconnect. And when you when you see this I'm talking about disconnect, when you see, for example, Democrats and especially Biden, of course, he, of course, is now the visible head of the Democrat Party, which he's reminded us several times now. Uh, but we just talked about Antifa and we see how they go around and they're fully armed and they use it to terrorize other people, to scare people in the Portland area. We also see them in Seattle and elsewhere. But also we see in Afghanistan, Biden's big blunder right now, arming the Taliban. So you see Biden, he lets his little foot soldiers in the U.S. Antifa, they can walk around armed doing whatever they want. Want to do. And of course, you see in Afghanistan, he actually fund, or in many ways armed the Taliban, a terror group. And yet they look at us and it seems like they're always looking for every little way the ATF and these other agencies to say, how can we make the guns that law abiding citizens already possess? How can we make that no longer legal? How can we make that a felony now? Do you kind of see that strange disconnect in the way that the Democrats, I guess, are governing governing on this issue? Yeah, certainly. I, I mean, like, they, there's certainly a, a disconnect, one, like we talked about with the text. But I think, too, you're seeing a disconnect with the reality of what happened to a lot of Americans in, in 2020. I mean, look, they, there is a reason that you had something like eight or nine million new first time gun owners, unheard of, just completely unprecedented numbers in 2020, uh, all across the, the political spectrum, people that don't fit into, you know, your stereotypical caricature of a gun owner. And it's precisely because they, they're looking at this disconnect between you know government that that says look no we're, we're here we need we have police no one needs a gun because we have police to protect you and then the disconnect with 
you know, rhetoric of defunding the police, of saying, you know, uh, during COVID, you, you literally had some major police departments that were essentially saying, look, if there's not a dead body, don't call us, we're not coming. Um, so I, you saw a lot of Americans for the first time sensing just how fragile our, our sense of, of, of stable civil society is and saying, no, this is understanding for the first time, this is the point of being able to keep and bear arms is that at the end of the day, I have something to fall back on if the government can't or won't be there to protect me. I guess we should keep our fingers crossed on this one. Amy, thank you so much for joining us tonight.